to the October edition of the Forensic Update. I'm Bill Duffin. The President's Council of Advisors on Science and Technology, or PCAST, recently published a report that has stirred significant discussion in the forensic science community. The Council report provided eight recommendations on various comparison disciplines, from complex DNA mixture to fingerprints. Since the release, several industry organizations, including ASCLAD, NDAA, and DOJ, have issued response statements to the PCAST findings. We encourage everyone to read both the report and responses, as PCAST will be opening up requests for information prior to the November meeting. You can find links to the PCAST report and responses on our website under the As Seen on the Forensic Update page. October is National Cybersecurity Awareness Month and one of the key themes this year is security in the workplace. Here's NFSTC's digital forensic technical instructor, Ricky Ruckman, to share his top mobile security measures. Probably the number one thing you can do is install some type of security or antivirus app on your phone. We all do that with our computers, but we don't think about that so much with our phones. So probably the number one thing is to get that security app installed on your phone. It's always important uh, to install updates when they get pushed to your phone. Some people are kind of skittish about not installing those updates, but always install your updates because those updates that they push to your phones, those have the security patches that cover vulnerabilities that have been identified. When you get an uh, email, think before you click. When you open up the email, you're not susceptible until you click on any links within that email. So you always want to verify who the email is from. It's not always easy to identify those uh, malicious emails or links. One particular one, it's called spear phishing. It's when it actually looks like it's an official mail from your business or office. Maybe they've got the address numbers for a company, so they'll send it out to everyone in that company and they make it look like it came from an office within the company. The biggest telltale sign is probably someone in the office, maybe your admin or human resources, asking for something that they typically wouldn't ask for. Do a little research before you click on that link. As a general practice, I would recommend changing your password every month or any time that you think there was a possible intrusion on your account. If you think you have been compromised, ensure that you change your passwords as soon as possible and not just for that account, but I would change it for all your accounts. You should use a separate uh, password for each account and also you should remember phrases for your passwords. That also includes uh, special characters and not just words, especially dictionary words. Something as simple as $3 for the pirate hat, for instance. You can follow NFSTC on social media as we continue to share more tips and information all month long. Laboratory personnel work on case after case, rarely meeting the people behind the file. That change for NFSTC's forensic biologist, Lisbeth Cologne, at the International Symposium on Human Identification in September. In 2002, Lisbeth was bioscreening evidence in a rape case and found a DNA sample on the collar of the victim's shirt. Julie Weil was the survivor of that vicious attack and has become an activist for other rape survivors. While speaking at the conference's panel on reducing the sexual assault backlog, Julie was surprised to learn the analyst who worked her case was in the audience. The sample Lisbeth found was the key piece of evidence needed to convict the serial rapist responsible for Julie's attack. This year's conference was the first time the two met, a moment both said was incredible. This amazing story has been published by People Magazine. Be sure to visit our website to get the link. October is more than Halloween and pumpkin spice, it's also time to celebrate National Chemistry Week. This year the theme is forensic science, something we are very excited about. Follow along on our Facebook and Twitter on October 16th to the 22nd to like, share, and comment on your favorite chemical analysis methods. To cap off the week, we'll be participating in the annual St. Petersburg Science Festival. Join us Saturday, October 22nd on the campus of USF St. Petersburg as we share our love of forensic science with the next generation of investigators. Want to learn more about any of the stories covered in this edition of the Forensic Update? Click on the link below or visit our As Seen on the Forensic Update page on nfstc.org. For NFSTC, I'm Bill Duffin. Thanks for watching.